Hello, my name is Luis Montalvo and I'm a med student at the Universidad Católica Santiago de Guayaquil. I'm going to talk to you about balancing the effect of leukotrienes in asthma. So first we must know the definitions of asthma and leukotrienes. Asthma is a chronic or ongoing disorder that is caused by inflammation of lung tissues and is marked by a tightening of the bronchial tubes, which causes wheezing and shortness of breath. In addition, the body produces more mucus than normal, which can clog the lungs. Leukotrienes. The leukotrienes are a family of biologically active molecules formed by leukocytes, mastocytoma cells, macrophages, and other tissues and cells in response to immunological and non-immunological stimuli. Now I will play a video for you in, you, in which you will watch how asthma works. What is asthma? This animation is brought to you by the American Lung Association. People with asthma have hypersensitive airways. Their lungs react to things that may not bother other people. Asthma can cause significant changes within the airway, all of which narrow the opening, making it difficult to breathe. This is how the airway looks in an airway without asthma. The airway is pink and clear, with no interior swelling, and the muscle bands around the airways are not tight. There is no mucus overproduction. Air moves freely through the open airway. Untreated or poorly controlled asthma can cause changes in the airway that may be irreversible. When you have asthma, three main changes can occur in your lungs. The first is inflammation. This makes airway tissue irritated, red, and swollen. When you have asthma, inflammation is always there, even when you are not experiencing symptoms. When the tissue becomes inflamed, the airway narrows and airflow is decreased. The second change is bronchoconstriction. This is the tightening of muscles that surround your airways, further reducing the opening. The third and final change that occurs is an increase in the secretion of mucus which further blocks the airway. When someone with asthma comes in contact with an asthma trigger, such as pollen or tobacco smoke, one or all three of the processes, inflammation, constriction, increased mucus production, can occur, all of which contribute to the narrowing of the airway. This is known as an asthma attack or episode. Thank you for viewing this animation from the American Lung Association. So, applications in medicine. Now, I will tell you how leukotrienes play a key role in asthma. They do, it, they do it in three ways. First, causing inflammation, second, bronchoconstriction, and third, inducing the production of mucus. The cysteine leukotrienes, LTC4, LTD4, and LTE4, have been shown to be the most potent bronchoconstrictors in humans and are believed to play a crucial role in asthmatic airway obstruction. Leukotrienes may attract white blood cells to the lungs, increasing swelling of the lung lining. Finally, leukotrienes also increase mucus production and make it easier for fluids to accumulate. Asthma is a very common uh, condition. Uh, it, there's a high association with, in people who have allergies. Uh, and I'm always amazed that people come in in their 30s and 40s and have had lifelong seasonal allergies and out of the blue they start having wheezing and cough and shortness of breath and they're sort of uh, stunned to find out they have asthma. But the two conditions coincide uh, in each individual, so it's very common. Asthma is, uh, at its root, is a, a twitchiness or spasticity of the airways, so it goes from normal uh, to very uh, constricted um, very quickly. So uh, asthma is characterized by intermittent symptoms. Day-to-day uh, -day doing fine, then they'll get a respiratory illness and they'll have a lot of prolonged coughing, wheezing, shortness of breath, and may even end up in the emergency room or hospitalized. But it's a very, very manageable condition and I should emphasize that people who have asthma and, and don't smoke cigarettes will never 
uh, die of respiratory failure or have COPD like you see in the commercials. Now, what are the pros and cons of the effects of leukotrienes or the incidence of leukotrienes in asthma? A pro is, is that if scientists could block some of the actions of leukotrienes, they could reduce the inflammation, bronchial constriction, and mucus production. In short, stopping the action of these chemical mediators might stop the progression of asthma in some patients. Cons. There are more than 4,000 deaths due to asthma each year. In addition, asthma is indicated as a con contributing factor for nearly 7,000 other deaths each year. Among children ages 5 to 17, asthma is the leading cause of school absences from a chronic illness. For adults, asthma is the fourth leading cause of work absenteeism and presenteeism. When you look at what the CDC has on asthma, they're frightening in, in, in some ways to look at because I don't think people realize what we're looking at here with regard to this disease. Now, the, the first one catches me here. Between 2001 and 2009, people diagnosed with asthma grew by more than 4 million people. You made a very good point earlier. Our air quality outside is much better in the United States than it used to be a generation ago. Why is that number rising so exponentially? Right. Well, <clears throat> you know, that doesn't necessarily mean there's more asthma because there may be better identification of asthma. Uh, you know, the state of the knowledge on asthma is better. So, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's greater understanding that a lot of coughs that used to be treated with antibiotics didn't get better are actually asthma. And uh, there are better medications, so there's much more effort put into you know, establishing the diag diagnosis of asthma. So I think some of the, you know, the increased uh, uh, prevalence, the increased numbers of asthma is probably just uh, better identification. Um, I do think that, I do know of two things that, uh, that are important. Um, and one, one of them is super interesting. And, uh, uh, patients that uh, have asthma are more likely to have not grown up on a farm. Hmm. Yeah. And uh, why is uh, that? Why do you think that is? I, I, the air quality. It, it, uh, it's really uh, it's really interesting. The, it, kids that l grew up on a farm handle dirt, and they handle <laughs> animal dirt, and they're exposed to a lot of bacteria, and their immune systems are more robust because of that. issue applied in Ecuador. According to the World Health Organization, asthma affects 10.9% of Ecuador's population. The Asthma Insights and Reality in Latin America study showed that in Ecuador, 55% of the children interviewed reported missing school due to asthma. The same study showed that 37% of adult asthmatic patients reported being absent to work due to this condition. And finally, 54% of the interviewees admitted admitted presenting constant symptoms with an excessive use of medication. Sorry, but this video that I will play will be in Spanish because it is the only one that I found that had information about the situation of asthma in Ecuador. Por otro lado, la contaminación ambiental en el Ecuador ha aumentado, factor que tiende a incrementar los casos nuevos de asma. Por esta razón, especialistas en salud respiratoria buscan disminuir las manifestaciones propias de la enfermedad para mejorar la calidad de vida. La realidad del asma en el Ecuador en los últimos años se ha visto incrementada en nuevos casos, por lo que el número de profesionales ha aumentado tanto de neumonólogos pediatras como para adultos. Gracias a esto tenemos mucho más diagnósticos de pacientes con asma, que nos ayudamos y nos apoyamos en la parte en examen de evaluación del paciente, pero un apoyo fundamental es el uso de la espirometría, que sirve para medir la capacidad pulmonar. Esto ha permitido que en la actualidad el control de esta enfermedad 
disminuye la frecuencia de los síntomas y que el paciente no tenga limitaciones físicas en su vida diaria. Si el paciente conoce su enfermedad, también hay niños que van a faltar menos a la escuela, hay adultos que van a faltar menos a su trabajo y van a tener una mejor calidad de vida. Son varios los factores de riesgo existentes, por lo que realizarse tratamientos adecuados permitirá generar una mejor calidad de vida. Con respecto a la nota, varias, varias cosas. ¿no? Uno, poder dormir, tener un sueño continuo, que duerma completamente durante la noche. Dos, que no tenga limitación a ninguna actividad física. Y lo otro es el consumo de recursos humanos, tanto en el área médica como recursos privados. Es decir, que, que ese niño, que ese paciente no acuda a la consulta a medianoche o a consultas no planificadas, que no tenga que estar utilizando tanta medicación de rescate, porque el asma es una enfermedad crónica que no se cura, pero se puede controlar de manera adecuada. Ante esta situación, Hermes Rivero sostiene que es necesario incrementar los recursos y la conciencia de la importancia de la salud respiratoria. La Organización Mundial de la Salud, entre una de sus, de sus promociones que hace es que los pacientes tengan, aparte de un buen diagnóstico, acceso adecuado a la medicación. Génesis Armas, Oromar Televisión. No, I want to apologize because I think I said I didn't find in, instead of saying I didn't find. It's just I'm tired. But let's finish with the conclusion. The conclusion. Asthma is a very common disorder that affects lung tissues. Leukotrienes play a very important role in how asthma attacks occur and the way symptoms develop. If these are blocked, it might stop the progression of asthma in patients. So before finishing, I would like you to watch a final video. With this COVID-19 global pandemic, the amount of misinformation circulating online is more rampant than ever. And it's really important that parents, especially parents of children with asthma, uh, go to vetted resources and they get the right information because we want to have people prepare but not panic. And there's a couple of things in specific to asthma that I want to address. Uh, one is really the use of inhaled steroids. Uh, there's been media reports about how steroids can cause problems with with COVID-19, but that does not apply to children, and it does not apply to inhaled steroids, and it does not apply to asthma. Inhaled steroids are at a dose that is much, much lower than what we give through uh, a venous infusion or by mouth, uh, and inhaled steroids are extremely important for people with persistent asthma to try to keep them from having a severe exacerbation. So for anybody who's worried about exposing their child with asthma to steroids, um, you know, a good way that you would increase their risk is by stopping their daily inhaled steroids. So we don't want to do that because we don't want to put them at risk to have a severe asthma exacerbation. And it's also important to recognize that we're also in the middle of spring tree pollen season. And tree pollen uh, can cause seasonal allergies in a lot of children, and that often goes hand in hand with asthma. And these symptoms can often mimic what would happen with COVID-19. COVID-19 will cause fever, whereas seasonal allergies will not. But both of them can cause cough, runny nose, difficulty breathing. So now more than ever, we want to make sure that any child with asthma continues to take their inhaled steroids if they've been prescribed those in the past by their doctor to make sure that their asthma is under good control and they're not at risk to have a severe exacerbation. Thank you very much.